thing is, he's a hero, a legend to many people, so obviously someone who's a hero and a legend, i.e. me, should interview him. Uh, well, I know I don't agree with that, but you know, only one of us can go, so we've got to pick a way to choose. One, two, three. Yes. Well, look, why does a rock beat everything? I mean, it's a rock. Not a word. He's constantly pushing the envelope as to what creativity in games actually is. Kojima came along and he made video games seem like a serious artistic medium. It is a huge deal to be invited to go and meet with Mr. Kojima. As for over 30 years, he was one of the most important people at the huge video game company, Konami. In 1987, games were kind of about just fighting each other. Metal Gear was released and it was much more about being stealthy and being sneaky and thus the stealth genre as we know it was born. Now he's worked very, very hard to keep the concept and the game fresh through all the different versions of the game, but recently had quite a large falling out with Konami and left to go and create his own company. Now this is the first time anyone's been invited behind closed doors to see what he's up to. We're on our way to the studio now, and it's been just over a year since he left Konami and set up on his own, and we don't really know what he's been doing in that time. We know a little bit about his new project, Death Stranding, that's coming to the PlayStation 4 at some point. Um, so hopefully we'll get to find out a little bit more and maybe we'll get a glimpse into the future and what's to come as well. My name is Aoife Wilson, I'm from Eurogamer and I'm talking about Hideo Kojima. The end of his time at Konami uh, is a little bit dramatic. I mean, it's, it's been likened to a breakup and I think that that's, you know, for the most part, that's spot on. It was very um, turbulent and it was very shocking. I think that was the main thing, the main takeaway from it was he had worked at Konami for 30 years. His name was pretty much synonymous with Konami at the time and out of the blue, it just, it, he just decided, you know, he just announced he was up and leaving and people were very up in arms about it. And it was kind of a little bit, at the time, it seemed a little bit bitter on both sides. But I think people were upset at the time as well because not only did it kind of taint the, the release of Metal Gear Solid V, but it meant that Silent Hills, a, a production that Hideo Kojima had started work on with Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus, had ceased and people were really looking forward to that. So when it was finally announced that he was starting his own indie, indie studio and working on his own game, people were like, brilliant, can't wait to see what you're doing. The first thing you do though before an interview in Japan is swap gifts. It's a traditional Japanese custom. Oh, 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 oh the BBC? Yeah. I don't know if you like Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I hear you're a bit of a Le Lego fan. Uh, yes, on yes. The quiet. Oh, thank you. And so that Kojima is not your average game designer. Oh. This is for you. And this isn't your average office either. Oh, wow. Or your average company mascot, for that matter. I feel like I'm in a sci-fi film. The man credited with changing the way many people approach game design is not taking his new venture lightly. He wants his next steps to be just as successful as his first ones, clearing his mind of some of the negativity of recent years. Isn't it? Yeah. Focusing instead on the future, new titles, new projects, and new ideas. You know, the reason that the, the company was, was created was because of the sort of you leaving Konami. How do you feel about that whole thing now, looking back over it? So I worked at my previous company for 30 years, and I had a lot of experience there, and I'm very appreciative of everything that I gained from that experience. As uh, 
technology changes and the market changes and users change, all these things change, but what I'm doing, this creation of making games, has not changed. So I don't feel any kind of worry about what I'm embarking on with this new journey. elephant in the room with Mr. Kojima is his weird and wonderful new project, Death Stranding. We've had a couple of trailers released, but I don't think they've really fully explained what's going on. See if you can make head and tails of it. No, that's neither. The studio itself is pretty small, but it has everything Kojima and his team need to crack on with the challenge of making the game. It'll be exclusively for the PS4, but details are still top secret, despite our best efforts. Are you in the game? <laughs> secret. Ah, nearly got him. Whatever it does turn out to be, he's not playing it safe. We want this game to be uh, something that people can get into very easily, but after they play it for about an hour or two, they start to notice something a little different. It's, it's something that they haven't played before. And whenever you create something new, some people like it and some people don't. For example, when I first uh, created a stealth game, some people really wanted to fight instead, and so they didn't like that. I want to make some kind of experience that has that effect on people. Really. What about taking him down? Yeah, let's take, let's take some guys out. Yeah. Back in the UK, the boys from IGN's Prepare to Try podcast love sharing their attempts at taking on older, trickier games and completing them, or at least trying to. Is he dead? Oh, there's no. Oh, run away. Look at the map. Look at the mini map. He's not oh. dead. I don't want to kill him. This is their first attempt at the Kojima classic Metal Gear Solid. Surprise! Mm. This is mm. not a throw button. I don't know. It was the third game of the series that really catapulted him to gaming stardom. To get back up. The ambition and what he's trying to do is amazing. It's bonkers. Like you, we were just like, how is he doing this with yeah. these tools, trying to make this type of game? Like the ambition of it is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> now he's seen you again. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh my gosh. Come on, lads, keep on trying. <laughs> well, next time. I <laughs> see you again. Cool. I don't think violence is the answer. I played it when I was 13 for the first time. And like, up until that point, video games for me was like Mario, like, you know, just like these weird, like, almost like really colorful children's games. Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll... You have to sort of think about what you're doing a little bit more. And I remember like, as a kid and now, like, that really blew my mind. Cause it's like, you can't just muck about in this. You've got to actually think about what you're doing. Oh, oh no! Shy. We're just going now. We're running. We're uh, running. It's fine. It's fine. Right, oh, throw oh, him, oh, Nice. Run, 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 run. God, 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 Keep running. Vent. Get in. Get in the vent. Into the vent. Yes. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot my butt. It's complex and nuanced as a game. There are like there's double crosses and triple crosses. You never really sure who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. Who I don't know now. <laughs> Twenty five years uh, later, yeah. I still don't really know. <laughs> I thought this place was just for keeping the dismantled This is warheads. brilliant, isn't it? They shouldn't have access but to But you also think of the limitations with what they're making. This is incredible yeah. for like, like okay. the era in which this game was made. We we're conducting exercises with a new type of experimental weapon. The most important 3D action game of the modern era. Like, it's responsible for making video games serious, I think. Back in Tokyo, touring the city together, it's clear to see where the inspiration for his next projects are coming from. Music, novels and movies. He loves talking about movies. I mean, the original old boy, I found it very difficult to watch. The building up of his own studio is also a source of inspiration. It's a journey that's been far more difficult than many people would have imagined. This tiny room was Kojima Productions' first ever office. Here, he spent time not only designing Death Stranding, but also working on his next big idea to change gaming as we know it. Watch him over, uh, play the game. Oh, so maybe it's a backstory, or maybe it's... Uh, right, I see. 
Oh, so it's sort of they're hidden, almost hidden, hidden movies or hidden scenes within the game. Game の中に映画が隠れてる。隠れてるあるいは映画の中にゲームが隠れてる。Yes, for example, or within a movie have a, a game hidden. Ah, right, okay. Oh, that's interesting. ゲームも音楽も映画も漫画も。Things such as games and music and novels and movies and all of these things will kind of mesh together into one one type of、uh, entertainment. ことをしたいとは思っています。Big ideas thought up in small corridors. So small, in fact, that this is where he interviewed potential staff members. The coffee in here was obviously good enough to persuade him to join. And our whistle stop tour doesn't end there. <laughs> There's lots more to see and learn about. One of the reasons people are excited about his next project is because Kojima's history of making complex characters that make a lasting impression on people who play his games. The cosplay I brought with me today is Liquid Snake、um, from the first Not Gear Solid. Liquid's an interesting character. He's、um, he's certainly a character that I I really like, and I I love his drive and I love his ambition.、Um, Even though he's not really a likable character as such, there's there's a lot about him that's really fascinating. I always feel like if you have an amazing cosplay costume, you it's basically kind of like being a celebrity for a day, right? Isn't it? Everyone comes up and asks you for your photo. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. I mean,、um, you do have convention experiences where you you can't walk more than two meters without、um, a bunch of photographers leaping on you. So, how long do you think it will take you to kind of get ready and become Liquid Snake? Um, I've already kind of done the basic preparations,、okay. so I reckon maybe 20 minutes or so. I've certainly cosplayed more characters in Metal Gear than any other series, and I, I'll always go back to it. And there'll always be another character that I think, oh, I should definitely cosplay them.、Um, and I don't think that's going to change. It's such a complicated series; it, it's got so much interest, so much intrigue,、um, and there's always something to go back to and realise you've missed, and be like, oh, I want to cosplay them now. That's brilliant. So there's there's so much. He creates characters and scenarios that are, are so realistic. But not all his characters are as popular with everyone. The controversy surrounding Hideo Kojima's female characters is interesting. I, I think he's created one of the best female characters in gaming with regards to the boss. I mean, she's literally called the boss. She's competent. She's non-sexualized, and she put,、uh, you know, she put Solid Snake on his arse. I mean, she was brilliant, and she was fun, and she was interesting, and she was complex. Then we come to Metal Gear Solid V, which was the biggest controversy I think to date.、Um, His the main female character in that, Quiet, who I genuinely think is a really interesting, good character. She was relegated to being in her underwear the entire game. Now, when people first, you know, were point, quick to point that out and be like, "Hey, what's going on?" This was before the game was actually released. He said, and I quote, "You will be ashamed of your words and deeds," implying that there was a good reason as to why she was like that. But that reason turned out to be, she breathes through her skin. Like that's you've made that be so. You can't say that that's a higher like that doesn't excuse it. That's a man who's created a woman to be in her underwear, which is fine, but own it. Don't imply that there's some massive artistic reason to this. It's fine. Just say it. You wanted her to be in her underwear. Has been some criticism about sort of how some of the women have been treated in your games. How do you re- react to to those people? Up to some degree, it's something that I'm. Calculating that it will have this kind of reaction from the people, I'm gonna have a different approach also for next game. The one thing that I really want to avoid is in like some games where you just have this character with big breasts and it's just moving and he has no background. That's the one thing that I want to avoid. Ideally, what I want to make is a character where at first glance might look like this, but has all this. The background that people try to understand and keeps reasoning to what is happening, and that's what I want to make. Each new stop on our tour of Tokyo is somewhere where the idea of merging movies, games, and novels together took shape. So right now you you have the instance where you, the, the creators choose for the player. Here's where you play. Here's where you have to sit and watch. Yeah, and that's I think that's where. That will, will end up changing. It's a vision grown from a long love of technology, 
His association with Sony, so important to the future of his new company, is not something new though. Here at their big tech exhibition in downtown Tokyo, he explains how the technology of the past has had a big impact on him. Stupidos. Oh, so what's, what's this? What are this? I just want to game. This is an MSX. Yeah, so this, the first Metal Gear game was made on, on this device. And looking back at the past raises questions about the future. You shoot with the space bar. VR is often said to be the next big thing in gaming. Now, this isn't VR like we know it now. But for Kojima, it's not so clear cut. Do you think um, that the games out there for VR at the moment are good enough to really sort of get the audience excited? You just, you know, it's easy in VR to just to do something scary, something from a height. Height lay something erotic. That's that's rather easy, but I think there's something beyond that. There's a lot beyond that that you can give people emotions that they haven't uh, experienced so far. Uh, and are you going? Can you tell us any of your ideas? <laughs> I know. So, what's what's the one? <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like a Kojima VR experience is not too far away, even if he won't share the details with us just yet. More proof that his appetite for making things is still as strong as ever even after 30 years. The first challenge on his and his team's plate, though, is making sure that Death Stranding is a success. How can it possibly live up to the hype? Legacy is obviously insured. Like, mm. a Hideo Kojima game, a Hideo Kojima Metal Gear will survive forever. But, like, I think it's interesting that he's kind of gone, like, for a while we thought he was going to do this Silent Hill game, which was yeah. going to be interesting mm -hmm. to see him do another genre yeah. and tackle new characters. I think it's more interesting he's going to go off and do this entirely new thing. Yeah. Editors exist for a reason, right? And I think that at Konami, at least, there were probably people around to tell him no. Maybe they don't quite know what that game is yet, like they're still working on it and still yeah. formulating it. They've put out this trailer that I think establishes a tone. Yeah. And it's like, this is going to be our troop of actors and talent, <laughs> Yeah. but we're still figuring it out. And it makes people think, and he creates characters and scenarios that are, are so realistic. He knows how to play with gaming as a concept. He knows how to, how to really push the envelope technologically as well as creatively. And I know that what he does, nobody else can probably do. He's really excited about everything. He's just, it's, this is clearly his passion. He's clearly put so much into it. Why haven't you retired? Why didn't you go and sit on a beach for the rest of your life? You've done everything there is to do in gaming. So guys in Japan, mate. I have a lot of fans around the world and most importantly, my favorite thing to do is making things. And that's the way I live. That's the thing that I will never retire. I think that even in my deathbed, I'll still be trying to make something. <laughs> And that's nearly it for our look back at the Metal Gear Man and our sneak peek into the future too. 30 years in gaming that helped change the industry and ideas that might just do it again. Risky, yes, but exciting too. How did it go? Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, really surreal actually. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you've heard so much about him and then to finally get to meet him and ask him some questions. Was it was... weird having him in front of your face? It was a little bit, but it was also really interesting because I think what you've learned from it is that, mm. that even though he's 53 and he's done everything he needs to do, yeah. he's still really passionate and still wants to sort of break new ground and take risks as well, which might, you know, upset some of his fans but might gain some new ones. So that was quite interesting. So would you go for a beer with him? Would he be someone who'd be like fun to go for a beer with? Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, I'm sort of meeting him in a bit. Well, can I, can I come? 